Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. So I was having a conversation on Reddit with a gentleman who disagreed with my take on the Restrict Act, and he had actually some good points. There were some sections where he said you were reading 553 instead of 552, you got the wrong section here, and there were some points where I conceded you're, you're right here. But on the overall landscape of what's going on, I disagreed with the premise. But there's a part of it where I think he brings up a good point, and it actually pro prompted me to think a little more about it, which prompted this video. He says, this isn't about some information that the government doesn't want you to see. This is about an app that has been actively used to spy on U.S. journalists for covering China critically. It's an actual honest-to-goodness national security risk. It's insane. I don't see anything in the bill that's all that concerning. Now, I, I disagree. I see things in the bill that are very concerning. But the point that he made, that this is being used to spy on U.S. journalists for covering China critically, and that being a serious risk, I agree. It, that, that is bad. I disagree with the idea that we should not do anything about that. But the thought that entered my head is, why is it that we can't just come out and have a head of state say, my fellow Americans, this application spies on you, and it reports information on you to a foreign government. They should not have the ability to spy on you. You probably don't want to be spied on. This is bad. We suggest that you uninstall all traces of this application and never use it again. Why would it be so hard for a head of state in America to say that? Why would they have no authority when saying that to the point where legislation has to be released where you have penalties of up to a million dollars and 20 years in prison and all this other nonsense that is so overreaching just to try to stop people from using TikTok? And the reason is that he has no authority because for the past 22 years, both the United States government and private corporations in the United States that are some of the most valuable corporations in the United States have benefited from the average American laying down and rolling over and giving up when it comes to violations of their Fourth Amendment rights and violations of their privacy. All of these social media companies that make up the top companies in the S&P 500 mine your data to figure out exactly who you are and then use that information on exactly who you are to allow advertisers to target you. The smartest minds in America are trying to figure out how to learn just a little bit more about you and exactly what you're doing, exactly who you are, exactly what you are, so that they can advertise to you better. We started on this road 20 years ago. We have laid the groundwork for it to be normalized that you're spied on. Whether we're talking about the Patriot Act, robbing you of your Fourth Amendment rights in the public sphere, whether we're talking about programs like PRISM that allowed the United States government to tap into the servers directly of the largest communications firms in the United States and just read your communications, no warrant. This went on for over six years until a brave whistleblower decided to let everybody know about it who would not be allowed a fair trial in the United States to this day. How did the United States reward a true American hero, a patriot that told millions of Americans that their Fourth Amendment rights were being infringed? we don't even allow him the right to a fair trial. Whether we're talking about Facebook that ran psychological experiments on its users without their consent, or used user data in a disgusting manner without their consent. Whether we're talking about Google spying on you when you are using your Android phone, which I will link studies to down below, or we're talking about them saving your voice clip recordings for over 10 years with transcripts without your consent because you used a voice-to-text app. We have normalized this. And when anybody speaks out about it, We've normalized shaming that person, calling them weird, calling them a conspiracy theorist, saying that they're strange. When I say that I use Graphene OS on my phone because I like that it limits Google's ability to spy on me and, and encourage other people to try using it, I'll often get responses like, oh, me, yeah, I like being spied on. That is their cool and hip way of saying, you're weird. I don't care. I've just rolled over and accepted that everything that I use will be spying on me. When I look something up in my phone and then I go home and I'm using a VPN, a browser with no cookies, and I'm not logged in, and I see an advertisement for the very thing that I search for on my phone, for all the work that I put in to not be tracked, if I mess up even one small thing, just one small thing, I'm reminded that they know everything that I'm doing, everywhere I go, and everything that I'm interested in all the time. We have normalized the fact that you are being watched at all times. And it's not to your benefit, whether for a private corporation's profit or a government's ability to surveil you at all times. How could an American head of state come out and be taken seriously when suggesting that we should not be using a social network because it spies on us? What authority would we have as a nation given that we have normalized this to the rest of the world? Because we've exported this. Much of this started in the United States. These companies that make a living off of figuring out exactly who you are so that they can profile you 
and then allow advertisers to sell to you based on that information. That started here in the United States of America, and we've exported it all over the world. What authority do we have to tell our own citizens that they should not use an application because it spies on you? As somebody mentioned in my video in the comments that I pinned, TikTok does to kids what every social media platform does to them. By the same means, algorithmic content delivery. If it was actually about the children or data, they would be pushing for laws restricting algorithms and data gathering or creating age limits to social use. The reason TikTok was singled out was because created in China meant it was an ideal target for Cold War II propaganda, providing an excuse to pass this law which is essentially aimed at creating an American equivalent to China's great firewall and internet censorship infrastructure. It was never about the psychological well-being of kids or privacy. Better words have never been spoken with regards to this issue. And let's not even get started on the idea that they are then going to use these social networks that we're using to try and propagandize Americans to get them to agree with their viewpoints, with their social ideas, with how they see the world. Because there's a lot of conversation about algorithmic bias, whether it's left-wing or right-wing in the United States when it comes to content that is recommended. You have people that say that many of these platforms have a left-wing bias, and then you have the New York Times and everybody else talking about how YouTube sends people down right-wing rabbit holes. There is no standing for somebody in the U.S. to say, that foreign social media network is trying to propagandize Americans, because we, for the last five years, have been constantly fighting amongst ourselves about how our own social media networks are trying to propagandize. Americans. How can you say that it's a bad thing that they do it when we're doing the same shit? The only standing an American statesman would have to say that they shouldn't be doing that is, in the words of the great George Carlin, Bullshit! That's our fucking job! That's our fucking job! We don't have the authority, we don't have the standing to take a moral stand against a company or a government that is spying on us. We can't tell that to our own citizens because to tell our own citizens that this is bad would require a lot of reflection that both these private corporations and our government cannot do. They lack the standing and the authority because of their own actions. The cost of getting your citizens to roll over when it comes to their Fourth Amendment rights and their right to privacy is that you can't point to your adversary and say that they're robbing you of your privacy. I'm never going to forget this one gentleman at the store that has a Huawei phone. And there's a bunch of reasons that I was making fun of this particular phone. Uh, but, you know, I remember just mentioning that, you know, the, or you were concerned about Huawei. And he just started laughing halfway through. And he pointed out all the same things that I'm talking about. Facebook, Google, Prism, Patriot Act. Like, we have normalized it in this country. It is completely normalized. To say that you don't want to be spied on does not make you normal. That makes you weird. That makes you somebody with something to hide. That makes you a strange nerd. That makes you, what are you running graphene you know, on your phone for? You're strange. To be honest with you, I have reversed my opinion that I said on this video that I did on the Restrict Act. In the video, I said that I am okay with the concept of a TikTok ban, but I disagree with this bill. But upon further reflection and speaking to this other gentleman and several other people who've expressed the same points about what it is that you would need to do, because you can't just single out a company. I mean, what would actually be tyrannical is not this bill that creates a legal framework that you could then use to ban something that disobeys it, but rather just pointing and saying, TikTok is bad. We are going to specifically ban this specific company. Rather than coming up with a framework of rules, laws, and regulations that we can then point to and say, your company disobeys these laws, frameworks, and regulations. We're just going to ban the specific company. That's actual tyranny. I actually kind of agree with that. You're right. If this is the framework that is necessary in order to ban TikTok, I am now against the ban of TikTok. I am for a ban of TikTok in my personal life and the lives of those that I care about. I am more than happy to never use TikTok, to never click on a TikTok, to if I were to ever click on a TikTok for any reason, I am okay with doing that only under the auspices that I am not logged in, that I am using Tor browser, that I am not doing it in any way where they can get access to anything else that's going on on my computer or potentially profile me. But I'm not for a legislative ban. I was wrong when I suggested a legislative ban. The naysayers that have said that you cannot simply ban TikTok without coming up with a tyrannical set of rules and regulations that it would then fit are right. If people want TikTok to be banned, this is the way you do it in a country that is not a banana republic. This is what you have to ask for. And this is bad. They're right. You, you cannot ban a company because you don't like the company. That is just, that, that's banana republic shit. You can't say, I don't like Dell, you're banned. You can't say, I don't like Facebook, you're banned. You have to come up with a set of rules 
and regulations that would apply evenly to everyone and then point out why those rules specifically allow this company to not be allowed. And that's exactly what they did. A lot of people don't like TikTok. As a result of people don't not liking TikTok, the government responded in kind and said, here is our tool that we can use to get rid of TikTok. I am no longer for a ban on TikTok. I am happy to never use it. I'm happy to discourage its use among anybody that I know. That also means I should probably not be on Facebook either, which I'm not. My account's deleted. I should probably not be on Instagram, which I'm not. My account is deleted. I probably should not be on Twitter, which... I'm not really, my nonprofit has an account, but I don't actually log into that. It just has my likeness on it. And honestly, honestly, I probably shouldn't be on YouTube. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be on YouTube. I use YouTube because it benefits my ability to get my message out to my audience. Where else am I going to have a platform of 1.7 million people to talk about the Farm Bureau corruption? I don't know how you ban TikTok. The cognitive dissonance necessary to say these are all the reasons that TikTok is bad but ignore everything that we're doing with our own government, with our own private companies that we champion. How could a head of state come out and say, you can't use this application, you shouldn't use this application, it spies on you? Because the last time somebody told you about someone spying on you, they had to leave the country and weren't able to come back in. You see, we don't celebrate people in the United States of America that tell you about violations of your privacy and try to protect you. We punish them. So how could we expect our own heads of state to go out there and tell people, they're spying on you, beware because we've already set the precedent that when somebody does that, they've broken the law, they've done something bad, they're a traitor. I think this is a great moment of self-reflection to look on our society and realize maybe this shit's not okay. Maybe we should start taking our privacy back. Maybe trading, having this software and this service available for free, a little bit of convenience in exchange for normalizing rampant data collection and spying was a bad deal. Maybe we should rewind and start again. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. By the way, before we end the video, I just wanted to have a word from our sponsor. On this channel, we have no sponsors for the obvious reasons if you just scroll through any of the content. So we sponsor ourselves with store.rossmangroup.com, a store run by Rossman Repair Group. Do you need USB-C port controllers to MacBook Pros? We have them in stock. Do you need genuine tacky flux from Amtech? We have that in stock. Do you need a hot air station that blows even more hot air than the senators that wrote the Restrict Act? We have them for sale for the low, low price of $204.99. That's right, folks. Go to store.rossmangroup.com to get your MacBook chips, genuine Amtec Flux, and genuine Atten hot air rework stations, the same that we use on our desks. Don't delay. Buy today. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.